very warm welcome to AD4 TV Radio Weekly Review. Coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital. I am Merciful Ajinomo. The Executive Secretary of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, Professor Suleiman Bugaro, last Thursday in Abuja, Nigeria's capital, received the interim report of the Ad Hoc Committee to dip in the research and development mandate of TED Fund. Professor Bugaro, who believes in the ultimate drive of TED Fund to deepen research and development that would advance the knowledge base of the nation's economy, said it is a stepping stone for Nigeria to compete with the world's leading economies in the 21st century. The report was compiled by an 18-man ad hoc committee and was co-chaired by Professor Placid Njoku and Tope Togun of the Nigerian Economic Summit. I make bold to say that without a robust research, development, and innovation agenda, we are not going to get there. We'd like to confirm that as a committee, we reviewed the R&D delivery systems of TED Fund. That's what TED Fund is doing. We reviewed the national research and development ecosystem. And we took understanding the structure for effective and efficient research administration. I took about 45 minutes to browse this document. And I was smiling from page one to the end because they did an excellent job. Um, they did something. They made sure they captured what they call my vision about R&D. For too long, Ted Fund had been associated with building classrooms, lab libraries, um, offices, laboratories, lecture halls, lecture theaters, call it, academic staff training, manuscript development, journal support, professional and institution based, academic journals, those categories as well as promoting entrepreneurship through NUC, as it were, providing funding for fabrication in our polytechnics and all those. If re the purpose of research does not have a lining of innovation, then you are not adding value. There's no creativity. There's no deep thinking that brings new outcomes. If you are doing that in research, it is perfunctory research. Nigeria could not go forward and be competitive with perfunctory research. We got to do what I call problem-solving research for, the, for technology, for the economy, and for society. In a similar vein, the Tertiary Education Trust Fund held a press briefing at its headquarters last Thursday in Abuja, Nigeria's capital. The Executive Secretary Ted Fund, Professor Suleiman Bugoro, highlighted the achievement of the organization since his reinstatement into office on the 21st January 2019 to date. He said that Ted Fund will continue to do the needful in intervening as well as deepening research and development to the growth of the nation. He further stressed that individuals who indulge in malpractices will, however, be sanctioned as this would stand as a warning to erring institutions. He therefore acknowledged the members of the press for reporting issues about that fund. Since my return on 21st of January, my gracious return to office courtesy of Mr. President, I, I met in that fund some situations that were pretty difficult for me to proceed smoothly regarding policies, and the most staring of all of them was the issue of uh, what has become ignobly the so-called stranded scholar issue. It set me making an aspect that ordinarily wouldn't be a priority, the very first priority as I return. We're hoping that through the R&D Standing Committee will increase the awareness for the need to synergize, both within science, technology, disciplines, as well as uh, the social sciences, that are required to define even the quality and uh, methods of governance, uh, which has been a major weakness for our country. 
if my, this, my staff in Tetfon engage in infractions, I never allow it. I cannot allow either lecturers or heads of institutions, as it were, VCs, rectors, provosts, to encourage or go into collusion. And I'm told that sometimes it's like they take the monies and they go and share it with some, some persons within the institution. Well, I'm not going to call names at this point. But you will appreciate that it made a very strong case for malpractices. These are unacceptable. Now that we are, we are being informed, I promise that we will proceed to take action. Gentlemen of the press, thank you very much, and thank you for the great job of uh, reporting what we've been doing out there. The year 2019 is almost coming to an end, and the Yuletide is a season of sharing and merriment with friends, neighbors, and loved ones. It is also a season where individuals patronize traders for their various needs. But it seems the high prices of commodities is discouraging potential buyers, resulting in many traders experiencing low sales. 84 TV Radio went to the Utaku market in Abuja, the federal capital of Nigeria, to ascertain the prices of commodities. The market, alhamdulillah, I'm also market, you go consume more, more. Before the kids may why they passed before. So just now it didn't change. Because of this government, you don't know what happened. Open that place why they say I'm now. Open that place why they say nobody to five days. In Maramanta they come they pursue the everything why they say. People, why they there, they reach three hundred people. Something why they scatter for that place. They reach hundred million. Actually, before the season, a bag of rice, we were, bought, we were buying it at uh, 22,000, 21,000. But since this period now, like this rice you are looking at, I bought it three days ago. It's 25,500 now. <laughs> Even the bag of gari we are buying before, we are buying the gari of gari 9,000, and now it's 12,000 in the bag. So what condom small is a beans? Because yeah, harvest time, you can get a mood of beans now, there, where we are buying it, 400, 450. Now we sell 500 in the market. Personally for me, sales last year, this festive season was better than this year. So people, I think generally people are just complaining that there's no money. So even if you go to the bus stations, you would, you would expect people to be traveling now, but sometimes their buses are not even full, and they just have to wait. Some people just travel just like that without their buses being filled up. So it's everywhere. It's not just the market. Last week, we reported that currently in Nigeria, youths, especially young males, prefer pursuing a career in football instead of education. Our crew spoke with some sportsmen on reasons responsible for this. We have a lot of graduates like on the street today without jobs. And when you, once you make it in football, if I had finished school and I have served, what, I, what I'm earning right now, I wouldn't earn it. It's actually necessary to, to combine education and football. The problem is majority of footballers in Nigeria today are pursuing this career as a means of economic migration. People, most of them are poor. Most people from poor backgrounds, they want to use football to change their lives. To me, the best combination of things in life for somebody who so much loves football is the combination of education and the game itself. Because after the game, you have a lot of years ahead of you to be able to get things done. This game cannot last you more than 15, 20 years, no matter how brilliant you are on the field of play. You are watching AD4 TV Radio Weekly Review. Coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital. We will go on a short break now. No stories when we return. Do stay. AD4 TV Radio. We focus on education with emphasis on research and innovation, science and technology, women and girl child education, children, health, youth and sports, socio-political and economic reforms, security, environment, entrepreneurship, and entertainment. We'll give you information at your fingertips. Learn on the go. Follow AD4 TV Radio on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. AD4 TV Radio, reliable and credible. We love you, AD4. 
You're welcome back. The pigmentation is considered a condition caused by different factors, which can be genetic, such as albinism and vitiligo, or man-made, which can occur as a result of skin bleaching, lightening, or whitening process. But in Nigeria today, skin bleaching seems to be the current trend among males and females, all in the quest to look good. The question is, why bleach your skin? 84 TV Radio had a talk with a cosmetologist, and this is what she had to say. Skin bleaching is gradually becoming prevalent in Nigeria and can be seen as a way of life for many today. According to a report by the World Health Organization, nearly 77% of Nigerian women use skin lightening products on a regular basis, which has led to several health implications. Gina Okoye, a cosmetologist, talked about skin bleaching and its implications. Skin bleaching, we have different types of it. We have some that is like you are going like a shade off your skin, which is not harmful to the skin. That means you are trying to go like one shade off what you have, which uh, makes your skin look brighter or for those it just make you glow. But then the other way of bleaching is that you are taking off, off what you have totally. You are taking out what you have, your skin like two shades, three shades of what you have. You want to look different from your normal complexion, which is uh, very bad. Because by doing that, you are going to have a lot of attack. And some of them, you don't go to the sun, you don't come out, you don't go to the heat, you don't go to a place that is stuffy. They select a place to be. But whereby you are into, uh, you just want to bleach out your one shade of what you have it's not like you're bleaching so with that you are okay precious anyogo reporting for ad4 tv radio abuja years after the boko haram insurgency hit the northeastern part of nigeria many victims were displaced from their homes and found succor in internally displaced camps set up in different parts of the country the story of one internally displaced person in any of the numerous camps is not different from any other displaced person. 84 TV Radio paid a visit to the Durumi IDP camp in Abuja, the federal capital. The report. Displacement is a form of social change caused by a number of factors, the most common being armed conflicts, natural disasters, famine, and so on. Nigeria as a country has her share of such disasters that have resulted in thousands being displaced from their homes and communities. Here in Nigeria's capital, the IDP camp in Durumi has a total population of 3,015 men, women, including children. Speaking with the public relations officer of the camp, Omar Gola, he said feeding in the camp is a major problem. We are living under expectation day and night. And our source of feeding in this place, we defend of individuals, you understand, non-governmental organizations, religious bodies, and individuals who come to our age. In the same vein, the assistant woman leader, Fatima Umar, appealed for assistance from individuals, corporate bodies, and the government to provide food, education, and other facilities at the camp. The life at home is different from here. Up till now, our people in the northeast are still suffering from Boko Haram insurgency. We are begging the government to tackle the issue of Boko Haram in our hometown because we are suffering here. There is no place like home. Chairman of the camp, Ibrahim Amadu, seeks the intervention of government to aid the displaced persons with farm implements and agrochemicals, as most of them were into farming before the insurgency and would like to continue to make ends meet instead of solely relying on the government. And the, suppose the government trying to bring the material of the planning farm. They are, are crying a part of your yeah, IDP, on behalf of IDP all. So many people, they are planning farm. So the material of our farm, 
the medicine where they use our farm, their government is supposed to try them. And James, reporting for AD4 TV Radio, Abuja. Staff of the Nigeria Postal Service staged a protest at the Ministry of Finance in Abuja, Nigeria's capital. The protest was led by the General Secretary of the Senior Staff Association of Statutory Corporations and Government-Owned Companies, Dr. Ayo Olorunfemi. The protesting workers carried placards with various inscriptions conveying their grievances over the planned takeover of the collection of stamp duties by another agency. Minister of Finance Zainab Ahmed asked the protesting workers to submit a position paper on the issue. Use them for the improvement of the country. So it is not my personal interest or the interest of the Federal Minister of Finance to create any conflict between two agencies of government. At the end of the day, my primary concern is for this revenue to be realized. Because right now, we don't even know what is sitting in the bags. So I want a documented case that I can use to escalate the case that you're making. And making a case like this is not the best form. We will submit our position paper as we have uh, promised, and uh, our members will continue their mobilization. We are willing to do this in all the tax systems of the Federation Party they listen to us. Ethiopia's first satellite, named ETISS-1, was launched on Friday, December 20th at 6.21 local time in the country's efforts to reach their development goals and encourage scientific innovation. Senior officials and citizens assembled at the Entoto Observatory and Research Center north of the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, to watch a live broadcast of the satellite's launch from a space station in China. The 70-kilogram remote sensing satellite will be used for agricultural, climate, mining and environmental observations along the Horn of Africa to collect data and improve its ability to plan for changing weather patterns. The satellite will operate from space at about 700 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. ATISS-1 will be the 99th satellite to travel to space in 2019. That's it on AD4 TV Radio Weekly Review, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital. You can join the conversation on our website at www.ad4tvradio.com. You can also like and subscribe to our YouTube page at AD4 TV Radio. Don't forget to follow us on social media at AD4 TV Radio on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Many thanks for watching. I am Merciful Ajinomo.